<clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome to the new studio, I guess. I tried my best to have the funny, funny things, you know, Fortnite shirt, upside down cross, basically the same thing, but I, I tr I'm trying. I'm, this, is, this is the best I could do with, with the stuff I have right now, so please laugh at the funny things behind me. That is so pathetic. Alright, I know I said in the previous video that I'd be working on a positive review this time, but to be honest, this video really got me interested more and I actually had more fun writing this one than I think any other video I've done. So I just wanted to get this one out first. Deal or No Deal is a game show franchise is originating from the Dutch show Million Yacht, or Hunt for Millions. The show has some variations between countries, but the general premise is that different sums of money are allocated randomly between 22 or 26 different containers or boxes or briefcases. Throughout the game, an anonymous person known as the banker will call in trying to buy the case that you selected at the beginning of the game. The host then asks the titular question, deal or no deal. If the contestant says deal and accepts the banker's offer, then their box is open to see if the offer they accept was a good deal or not. If they say no deal all the way to the end, then they keep their box and whatever value it has in it. Could be a penny, could be, I don't know, a car. The show is honestly very suspenseful and compelling to watch, especially the UK version. So the big brains over at, who develops this? Endemol decided it'd be a great addition to any three-year-old's DS library. We got our own American version in our silly little country. Hey look, it's the same guys that made Chicken Shoot. Us in America got this version, and you guys in the UK got this version. The version we'll be talking about today, and why I believe it is the worst game ever put on the Nintendo DS. Ooh, that hurt. Alright, alright, alright. Already I'm seeing some issues. First of all, was this really the best you could do? Just a poorly compressed JPEG of the logo? This image just looks so wrong and clearly isn't an asset designed specifically for this game. And I know this because the name of the video game is not Deal or No Deal, it is Deal or No Deal, the official Nintendo DS game. I mean, it's a stupid name, but at least get it correct. Were you embarrassed by how dumb the name was that the developer was just like, I'll just edit it out. I can't do anything about the box art, but I'll just edit. I'll edit it. It looks better. But seriously, you couldn't add a caption saying the official Nintendo DS game. Or, you know, anything that wouldn't make it obvious that this is just the first Google image result you get when you search Deal or No Deal UK logo. This was sold in stores. So the game has three different profiles that you can create. So you can share it with two other people. Your Deal or No Deal for Nintendo DS game. And the input method to enter your name is just wrong. This keyboard layout is very awkward looking. There's three blank squares in the bottom left that don't do anything at all. And there's no option for capital letters. But hey, we haven't even gotten into the game yet. So let's start. Now to start Deal or No Deal, you need to select a box. How would you implement this into a video game for the Nintendo DS? Maybe you'd lay out all the boxes onto a grid on the touch screen and have the player select it. I mean, that's what they did for the American version. But no! Instead of anything that would be remotely fast, user-friendly, or make sense, this is what they did. You have to move through several pages of boxes just to get to the one that you want. If you get all the way to the last page of boxes, 20, 21, and 22, instead of being able to tap the right arrow again to be able to cycle back to the first three boxes, you actually have to tap the left button eight times to get back to the first page. Why? It is very tedious to select boxes in this, and eventually you'll just be tapping whatever happens to pop up on the screen. Alright, I've got my box selected. This box contains an unknown amount of money. It could be worth a penny, it could be worth a quarter million. Periodically throughout my game I'll get an offer from the banker where he tries to buy my box. So what I'm doing here during this round is trying to open low amounts out of boxes and to avoid high ones so that way the banker believes that my box is worth more. And the players opening the boxes have very appropriate reactions. Open a low amount, they smile. Open a high amount, they look at you like you're the biggest disappointment they've ever seen. Ooh. This man already looks pissed. I'm scared to even open the box now. All right. Here goes. Yeah! Oh, thank goodness. He transmogrified into Steve Harvey. 
Was there ever a moment on Deal or No Deal where the box holder got mad at the contestant because they were losing? You're losing a game? Well, fuck you. That was terrible. All right, I've opened five boxes now, which means round one is over, and I'll be getting a call from the banker. He says he was about to give a generous offer, but his dogs, Scrooge and Marley, were dead against the idea. Oh, it's okay, Mr. Banker. I won't be mad. I know how much your dogs boss you around when it comes to finances. I understand. So pushy. Seriously, Mr. Banker, you're gonna let your dogs influence your financial decisions? Take some fucking charge. What does he mean his dogs were dead against the idea? Did he just turn to him and was like, I don't, I don't know, Banker. I don't know. Yeah, this is not looking good. You better offer a lower amount just to play safe. Is he just blaming his dogs because he's afraid I'm going to get mad at him? Do I intimidate you, Mr. Banker? Well, good! You should be intimidated. I'm not walking away from this ripped off. This offer you give better be at least 25 grand. At least! Oh, no deal. Oh, oh. oh boy, it's time for the three box trick! What's the three box trick? I have no idea. It was never in the American show, and I doubt it was in the UK show. So let's just watch and observe. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, slow down, slow down. Yeah, sometimes after you play a round, you'll be asked to play the three box trick. It's basically just three card Monty. They show you a box that has a mug inside of it, and then they very slowly and awkwardly mix the boxes around. It's so ridiculously, ridiculously easy to win. If you're successful all three times in this incredibly complex test of concentration, the banker will increase his offer. Why? Why is how much he's trying to buy my box for dependent on if I am able to follow a mug? Is he testing me? Is he trying to prove I'm worthy of a higher offer? Is he just sitting there thinking like, uh, I don't know, what, what is he even going to do with this money? I better test to make sure he really knows what he's doing. Sometimes I like fucking up on purpose just because I like the error message you get when you lose. PITY! YOU LOSE! Another stupid thing about this implementation of the three box trick is that even if you screw up on the first or second round, it still makes you play the remaining rounds even though you need to get all three of them to win. So what's the point of even continuing playing if you already screwed up the first or second round? All right, well, I'm done with that mode. There's gotta be more. Oh, sweet. Banker mode. This is something the American DS version didn't- <coughs> This is something the American version didn't have. I wonder how it'll be. Maybe it'll be a new perspective on the game. Maybe it'll be more interesting having a different play style. Yeah! I'm gonna be the best banker. I'm not gonna let my pets boss me around and tell me how much I'm gonna offer for their box. I'm independent. I'll do what I want. This will be fun. It's like a totally new perspective. All right, let's just- I want to fucking kill myself. Most of this entire playstyle is you just doing absolutely nothing. The only interaction you get is when you're making offers, which is very infrequent. It only happens six times throughout the game. You input numbers into this retarded keypad thing. Take a close look. It has everything you need, right? Ten numerical buttons, an OK button, and a clear all button. What could be missing? Oh, wait a second. It doesn't have a backspace button. If you screw up in entering your offer, you need to clear the whole text box instead of being able to backspace and enter in the correct number. Another thing that doesn't have? A decimal point. I understand that might be kind of weird to add in a decimal point with offers, but considering that this is a game where a contestant's box could hold a penny, a dime, or a half dollar, it actually would make sense to have a decimal point, especially because there was one time I was playing where the contestant's box either held 50 cents or one dollar, and I had to offer one dollar because I couldn't go in between them. There's about as much fun to be had in this play style as there is with playing with a calculator. Come on guys, I'm running out of funny numbers. Alright, so you might be asking yourself, What's the incentive to getting virtual money in this game? Is there any unlockable levels? Different playstyles? Well, the answer to that is yes. Yes, there are. There's four bonus modes called forfeit modes. You got family, friends, couples, and customs. It is 
really stupid. Inside each box is like a dare or something that you have to do. For the family mode, it's things like clean the windows or being taken out to the cinema. Oh boy, I hope I get the, uh, the one where it take me out to town for the weekend and not the one where I have to, uh, 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 participate in the family thing. For the friends mode, you know, it's shit like taking advantage of your friends for them to buy you presents, take you to the beach, organize a birthday party, playing rock, paper, scissors with them. Oh, I dodged a bullet there. I almost had to play rock, paper, scissors with my friend. Draw a picture of the banker. Oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, I'm not doing that. That's too far. That's too far, man. That's overkill. I find the inclusion of the couples mode extremely bizarre, especially because this is a game for ages 3 and up, and they have things like your partner has to do whatever you tell them for an entire day. Ooh, deal or no deal, number one game amongst abusive spouses. Seriously though, who's gonna play this? Who is going to play this mode? Hey babe, what do you want to do together? Oh, I don't know, hon. Let's play Deal or No Deal for Nintendo DS to the side. Yeah! There's also a custom mode, which is pretty obvious. You enter in your own dares. So now there's actually some fun you could have with this. After you unlock $1,250,000, you can unlock this play mode where you can get your friends to do a backflip, eat dog shit, whatever you enter in. And that's Deal or No Deal for Nintendo DS. What? Were you expecting more out of $30? Nope, that's all you get. Contestant mode, banker mode, and four forfeit modes. They are all really tedious and boring. Even though this game could be beaten in like less than an hour, I doubt it can even hold your attention for that long. It's just not fun. Which is why I personally consider this the worst game on the DS. Have a nice day everyone, and remember, I don't have a catchphrase to end the video on. Ah. <laughs> My key, please don't be talking to your imaginary friends. Please don't be talking. <laughs> please. please. <laughs> Alright, video is over. You can leave now. You can. Bye. You, you can leave. Video's done.